Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the second session in the Women in Law Dialogue series, the focus of which is on women in litigation. I am Nida Mahmood, founder of Learn, and your host and moderator for this session. With me is Ms. Anusha Shaigan, Vice President of CodingTheLaw.com, and our esteemed panelists, Ms. Mariam Haq, Ms. Zainab Malik, Ms. Zoe Richards, and Ms. Rabia Bajwa. Together, in association with Sheikh Ahmed Hassan School of Law, we bring to you this session today. The Women in Law Dialogue series is divided into three parts. In session one, which was held in February 2016, we laid down the foundation of the series and discussed the various challenges and opportunities in the legal profession that were out there for women. In session three, we will discuss the non-traditional career options that are available to women, those who choose not to go into litigation or hardcore law practice, what options that they might have, we will discuss those. But today we look at women in litigation. It is a focused session with the aim of creating awareness and addressing the gaps. The idea is to encourage more women to pursue litigation actively in courts and to participate meaningfully in the bar so as to fully realize their potential within the profession. Our purpose and objective is to maximize the utility of this human resource. We do not view it simply as a gender issue. For us, this is also a serious economic concern. Therefore, we will focus on discussing some you know, areas of reform where we are able to then fully integrate women into the legal profession and enable them not just to enter, but to remain in the profession after graduation and after the initial one or two years of their practice. With women making up more than half of those entering the legal profession, it is essential for us to ensure that this pool of talent is not wasted. Even in the words of World Economic Forum, maximizing access to female talent is today a strategic imperative for business. Any firm or organization not aiming for gender diverse leadership is limiting its pool of available talent and so clearly missing out on business benefits. But most importantly, this matters to us because for a profession whose guiding tenets are equity in treatment and elimination of bias, we feel that law appears to be failing its women and so it is our collective responsibility to bail the profession out of this allegation. Today, we will therefore talk about women, rights, and practice, as well as on a case for reform to make the legal profession more gender-friendly and inclusive. And in doing so, we'll be learning from the experience of the successful exceptions, some of whom that we have with us today, and see how they overcame their challenges. Over to you, Nusha. Please say a few words before we formally commence. I'm Anushya Shaigan. I'm the Vice President at Quoting the Law. It's uh, Pakistan's first legal news and analysis forum. And uh, we have related initiatives as well because we believe in providing access to justice to underserved masses uh, with the use of technology-enabled platforms. So we're in the process of developing a Q&A app um, where legal questions can be posed, uh, it's it's uh, you know it's already started. We're still in you know we're going to officially launch it very soon. Other than that, we have uh, an all Pakistan's um, consolidated lawyers directory. It's going to be called Vakil.pk. So uh, you know we're hoping that you'll sign up for that soon as well. And other than that, we have an uh, we have a legal database uh, for all legal resources. Uh, it's called kanun.pk, and that's going to be launched soon as well. Uh, apart from that, we have a National Law Scholarship Program, and uh, one of our scholars is sitting here with us today as well. She's going to be taking the minutes. Um, and we have almost uh, 12 scholars uh, throughout Pakistan. You know, they're studying at schools of their own choice. Um, we'll try to, you know, invite as many people uh, as possible in this Women in Law Dialogue series because this, we plan on having this uh, series to be a continuing thing. So, you know, it's, uh, it doesn't end here. Um, I think that's, that's enough about me. We'll move on to our speakers now. Uh, can you please briefly introduce yourselves and please don't be modest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Mariam Haq. I'm the legal director at Justice Project Pakistan. 
Um, it's a seven-year-old uh, human rights organization that focuses on the rights of prisoners. So we do direct representations of the most vulnerable and poorest pr Pakistani prisoners. So that would be prisoners on death row, mentally ill prisoners, juveniles who've been, who have been sentenced to death, victims of police torture, and so on. Ms. Zainab. My name is Zainab Malik. Um, I work with Mariam at the Justice Project. I'm a program manager. I also have a background in commercial, corporate, and constitutional litigation. And I've also done a bit of a work on human rights. I'm actually alums alumni, so it feels great to be here after four years. Right, Ms. Zoe Richards. So my name is uh, Zoe Richards. Um, I'm a lawyer by qualification. I was called to the bar of uh, Lincoln's Inn. This was in 2011. Then I subsequently went on and did my master's in law as a Fulbright scholar. Um, my areas of interest would be international humanitarian law. I've written extensively on human rights law. The uh, issues faced by identity and the construction of identity. Um, currently, I'm employed at Coca-Cola Beverages, and uh, I've worked and practiced as a lawyer for about four years with Dashtar Osaf of East Chamber. Uh, my name is Rabia Bajwa, and I'm working in this profession for approximately 17 years, and I, I look at Supreme Court. Uh, I'm also in bar politics, and I was elected as finance secretary of the Lahore High Court Bar Association in 2006. And uh, I also served as a law officer, as an assistant advocate general of Punjab for approximately one and a half years, 2012 to 2013, 14. So I'm here with you, and I'm also a human rights activist, and I have worked with different inter international national forums on different human rights issues. Yeah, so we're very excited that they're here. The, these are some of the finest uh, women in the legal fraternity. And you know they've, uh, we're very thankful to them for taking the time out and joining us here today. So let's start with Ms. Rabia Bajwa. Uh, how do you think um, the legal profession is failing its women? You know, given your experiences, what what challenges have you come across? I start with you when I started. So I was in my university when I was in law. I came here 17 years before. And when I entered this profession, when I came to practice, I didn't have any option or any such choice that I would go to this chamber. And there was no such appropriate guidance. So it was a basic thing that I had to find out that which chamber is better. And especially being a female, there are also hindrances that go to such a unique chamber where there is a continual atmosphere and they promote or promote the three women. So I went to the chamber and I started a year of work. So at that time, बहुत ज़्यादा जो छोटे-छोटे प्रॉब्लम्स थे वो ये थे कि हमारे जो सीनियर थे वो बड़े मतलब और तरह की उनकी प्रैक्टिस थी और वो सबॉर्डिनेट कोर्ट्स में नहीं जाते थे और जब भी आप प्रोफेशन में एंटर होते हैं तो आपको लर्निंग प्रोसेस के लिए आपको स्टार्ट करना होता है सबॉर्डिनेट कोर्ट से और एक बड़ी मिसकंसेप्शन है हमारे प्रोफेशन के अंदर कि जी नीचे वाली कोर्ट्स का माहौल अच्छा नहीं है और आप उधर नहीं जाएंगे जब तक आप उधर जा के अपना बेसिक इवन जिसको क्लैरिकल काम कहते हैं वो क्लैरिकल काम नहीं होता वो आपका ही काम है जो एक प्रैक्टिसिंग लॉयर है नोटिस जमा कराने से लेकर आपको अपनी लिटिगेशन की तैयारी के लिए या अपनी ब्रीफ की तैयारी के लिए और आपकी जो पटिशन तैयार करना है ये सब काम जो है वो एक लॉयर का होता है तो जब पहले दिन मैं गई तो मुझे ये नहीं पता था कि रोस्ट्रम पे आपने किस साइड पे खड़े होना है तो ये मेरा एक पहला दिन था लेकिन मैंने उधर ही उसी माहौल से जाके सीखा दूसरी बात ये है कि एक कंसिस्टेंसी जो है उसका बहुत बड़ा इशू मैं प्रोफेशन में देखती हूँ जब हम आते हैं तो ये होता है कि बस फटाफट पता नहीं कुछ हो जाएगा हम लोग क्योंकि बड़े खाब देख के आते हैं तो और ये ऑब्वियसली बिल्कुल नेचुरल है कि जब भी आप किसी प्रोफेशन में जाते हैं तो आपके बहुत ज़्यादा चैलेंजेस के साथ आपके ख्वाब होते हैं कि अब हमने पढ़ लिया वी हैव वेल एजुकेटेड एंड वी हैव मेनी एवेन्यूज टू डिस्कवर एंड वी हैव मेनी सक्सेस आर वेटिंग फॉर एस लेकिन प्रैक्टिकली कुछ सूरत और होती है क्योंकि उसमें जब आप जनरल प्रैक्टिस में हैं तो सबसे पहली बात तो एक तो आपको बेसिक काम का नहीं पता जैसे मैंने आपको बताया कि रोस्टम पे आपने जज के आगे किधर खड़े होना है दूसरी बात उधर एक्सप्लाइटेशन आपकी स्टार्ट हो जाती है क्लैरिकल स्टाफ के साथ भी कि जब हम जाते हैं तो जो कोर्ट्स के अंदर अमला है जिसको हम एहलमत कहते हैं कोर्ट क्लर्क कहते हैं असिस्टेंट ऑफ कोर्ट कहते हैं वो लोग भी आपके साथ कोई इतना अच्छा एटीट्यूड उनका नहीं होता 
और उधर भी आपको अपनी स्ट्रेंथ के साथ खड़े होकर बींग ए लॉयर बिहेव करना है और आपको कभी ये नहीं सोचना कि मैं एक जूनियर लॉयर हूँ या मैं सीनियर लॉयर हूँ यू आर बेसिकली लॉयर और आपका एक डिस्टिंगशन है कि आपको क्लैरिकल स्टाफ ए से आप मतलब ये अपना मुंशी जो है इवन के मुंशी भी आपको ट्रीट अपने सबॉर्डिनेट के तौर पर करते हैं तो ये वो चैलेंजेस हैं कि जो आपकी अपनी स्ट्रेंथ और आपकी पर्सनैलिटी आपका कॉन्फिडेंस जो है वो आप बहुत जल्दी इनसे ओवरकम कर देते हैं ये एक बेसिक जो इशूज़ थे वो ये हैं उसके बाद जो जब आप आ जाते हैं और आप अपना जब काम शुरू करते हैं तो उसके बाद ये होता है कि जो बेसिक चैलेंज आ जाता है वन ईयर आपने अपने कमिटमेंट से गुजारा और आप कोई आपको कहीं से कोई ऐसा इंस्टीट्यूशन या गवर्नमेंट पैट्रोनाइज अदारा या कोई भी और बार कौंसिल पैट्रोनाइज अदारा ऐसा नहीं है कि जो आपको पे करता होगा और फाइनेंशियल टर्म्स में बहुत सारे जो हमारे यंगस्टर्स हैं इवन के मेल भी वो प्रोफेशन को कर देते हैं और उसमें दो बेसिक चीज़ें होती हैं एक तो वही बात कि एक कंसिस्टेंसी नहीं उनके अंदर होती है और वो चैलेंजेस को फेस करने की कोई हौसला या तरबियत नहीं होती तो मेरा ख्याल है कि जो कंसिस्टेंसी इस प्रोफेशन के अंदर एक तो ये दो बैरियर्स फॉर फीमेल्स नंबर वन टू प्रूफ टम सेल्व एज ए कॉम्पिटेंट लॉयर और इन कम्पेटिटिव इन्वायरमेंट के अंदर लॉयर हु इज़ कॉम्पिटेंट दैन द मेल और हु इज़ नॉट लेस कॉम्पिटेंट दैन हर मेल कम्पेटिटर्स एक ये चीज़ और दूसरा बैरियर जो आपने क्रॉस करना होता है वो बीइंग ए फीमेल या बीइंग ए लॉयर न्यूली कमर लॉयर न्यू कमर लॉयर के आपने फेच कैसे करनी है अपनी मार्केट में कैसे आना है जो क्लाइंट्स की मार्केट होती है उसमें आपने कैसे आना है क्योंकि जब आप किसी फर्म के साथ अटैच होते हैं कॉरपोरेट सेक्टर में तो आपके लिए आप यू आर बेसिकली बींग पेड बाई योर ऑफिस और आप सैलरीड होते हैं तो वो आपको प्रॉब्लम्स का नहीं पता होता जो जनरल फील्ड के अंदर जो लॉयर्स किसको फेस कर रहा होता है क्योंकि कोई ऐसा मैकेनिज़म नहीं है कि जहाँ पर आपको किसी तरह से भी कुछ स्ट्राइपेंड पे हो रहा है या कोई सैलरी किसी तरह से आ रही है जैसे आप देखते हैं कि मेडिकल प्रोफेशन में आप जाते हैं तो हाउस जॉब के साथ आपको थोड़ा बहुत स्ट्राइपेंड ऑल दो के बहुत थोड़ा है लेकिन बार बार एक स्ट्राइपेंड ऐसा होता है कि जिसमें आप एक प्रोफेशन के अंदर आप बेसिकली अब खड़े हो जाते हैं लेकिन लीगल प्रोफेशन के अंदर ऐसा कोई कंसेप्ट ही एग्जिस्ट नहीं करता और दूसरा एक और बड़ी नेगेटिव चीज़ जो होती है फेस करनी होती है फीमेल लॉयर्स को वो ये कि बहुत बड़े जो चैम्बर्स हैं वो उनको प्रेफर ही नहीं करते वो फीमेल लॉयर्स मैंने देखा है जनरल प्रैक्टिस के अंदर बहुत कम ऐसे आपके चैम्बर्स हैं वेल रिप्यूटेड चैम्बर या जो बड़े कॉम्पिटेंट लॉयर्स हैं फेमस लॉयर्स हैं कि जिनके चैम्बर्स में खुतिन काम कर रही हैं उनके पास ये अपॉर्चुनिटीज़ भी नहीं होती और फिर उसके बाद ये होता ही है कि वो किसी ने बता दिया किसी तरीके से किसी टीचर से किसी स्टूडेंट से पता चला और वो दोस्तों के कहने पर किसी चैम्बर को ज्वाइन किया तो ये क्लाइंट्स को फैच करना मार्केट में जाना और ये कॉन्फिडेंस डेवलप करना ये एक बेसिक चैलेंज है एक तो वो बैरियर क्रॉस करना फीमेल वाला और दूसरा ये क्लाइंट्स जब आपके पास थोड़ा सा मार्केट में काम करते हैं तो फिर उन क्लाइंट्स का जो एक कॉन्फिडेंस लेवल है वो आपने किस तरह उनको अट्रैक्ट करना है कि जी मैं आपके लिए उसी तरह के हमारे लीगल सर्विसेज हैं जैसे हमारे कोई मेल को दे सकते हैं बल्कि उनसे अच्छी दे सकते हैं कोर्ट का एक अपना डेकोरम होता है और आपने उसकी रिस्पेक्ट हमेशा करनी है लेकिन ये चीज़ जो है आपको कचहरी में या इवन सिविल कोर्ट्स वगैरह में भी आपको ये माहौल नहीं मिलता और अनफॉर्चुनेटली पिछले पाँच सात साल से ये चीज़ ज़्यादा एग्रीवेट कर गई ये प्रॉब्लम तो उसमें जब खुतिन एक डिसेंट अपने एक्डेमिक्स के साथ जाती हैं या डिसेंट अपने पोस्टर के साथ जाती हैं तो वो ऑब्वियसली क्लाइंट्स जो होते हैं वो खुद ही कह देते हैं लो जी होते लड़की है तो फिर उस तरह गल नहीं कर सके ये तो खैर अच्छा उसके बाद ये हुआ कि जब आप कोर्ट्स में जाते हैं इन डिसेंट जो आपका जो माहौल है उसकी वजह से आप लोग बहुत ज़्यादा प्रॉब्लम में आते हैं और उधर ये होता है कि आपको प्रेफर करते हैं जो आपके मेल कोलीग्स हैं उनको जो लिटिगेंट्स हैं वो करते हैं एनी anyway, इस बैरियर से भी आप क्रॉस कर गए आपने मेहनत की बहुत ज़्यादा हार्डवर्क की और ऐसे सोल्यूशन उनको दिए ऐसे रेजोल्यूशन हुए कि उसके बाद फिर वो लिटिगेंट्स जो थे वो आपके पास ही वो आते रहे ऐसे होता है फिर हाई कोर्ट आ गई आप दो साल बाद इनरोल हो जाते हैं हाई कोर्ट के लिए अब हाई कोर्ट में आते हैं तो उधर एक बड़ी प्रॉब्लम हमें देखनी पड़ती है जो जजेस हैं फेस वैल्यू बहुत ज़्यादा है फिर आते हैं बार पॉलिटिक्स की तरफ कि मैं मोस्टली जो हमारे कैंडिडेट्स होते हैं किसी के मैनिफेस्टो में ये बात नहीं होती कि हम फीमेल लॉयर्स के लिए या यंगस्टर्स के लिए कोई प्रोग्राम हो कोई मैकेनिज़म हो कोई कंसर्न हो वो ऐसा कुछ नहीं होता वो अगर उनको सपोर्ट भी करते हैं तो वो सिर्फ पोलिटिकल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से करते हैं कि एक तो उनके वोट्स लेने होते हैं तो जब कभी गैदरिंग होगी उनके लिए बात कर देंगे और या फिर ये होता है कि वो थोड़ा सा दिखाने के लिए कि हम बड़े प्रोग्रेसिव हैं तो उन लोगों को अट्रैक्ट करने के लिए थोड़ा सा फीमेल्स को इनक्रेज करते हैं लेकिन आइडियोलॉजिकली कोई भी कैंडिडेट विद फ्यू एक्सेप्शंस कोई भी कैंडिडेट ऐसा नहीं
गवर्नमेंट लेवल के ऊपर या प्राइवेट लेवल के ऊपर जो हमारी प्रॉब्लम्स हो वो एड्रेस करें आई लाइक टू मूव टू द क्रिमिनल साइड Uh, with Ms. Maryam Haq, uh, would you please highlight uh, the challenges on the criminal side and how you overcame those challenges? Initially, when this panel started talking, uh, we were called exceptions, and I completely disagree with that because that's to show that there are only this many women out there that can make it to a certain point in their career. The exception doesn't exist because we've done something exceptional. The exception exists because there is not encouragement or there are not enough positions. out there that we are willing to grab and the the problem with that is because it's a male dominated uh field and a career the the few positions that are there lead women to fight for those positions and in a way that we pit are pit against each other yeah. and don't provide that encouragement for each other and there's very few seniors that i've seen uh like miss rabia who are disencouraging and who are welcoming towards women and who are pursuing their own Careers because women again will shadow a lawyer for several years and will get nowhere in their career because they will never be given that opportunity to do so. और आपको बहुत एक thick skin जो है वो करनी पड़ती है इसका ये मतलब नहीं है कि कोई ऐसी जगह नहीं है हमारे लिए to enter into the career to actually push forward and do it. I'm not a purely criminal lawyer. My the, my practice is overlaps with human rights work as well. Uh, but I did start with going to the kacheries and going to the court room. वो court room जो होते हैं अगर मैं आपको उनकी थोड़ी हालत समझाऊँ आप सोचिए कि कितना कोई कमरा होगा दस दस फुट पर पंद्रह फुट का कमरा होगा बहुत गंदा उसमें टूटी सी वो जो पुरानी अलमारियाँ होती हैं वो पड़ी होंगी जो उनका रिकॉर्ड होगा उस कमरे के अंदर आपको तीस मेल वकील मिलेंगे जो एक दूसरे के अंदर ही खड़े होंगे वो उन वकीलों के अंदर से आपने रास्ता ढूंढना है कि किसी तरह आपकी आवाज जो है वो जज तक पहुंच जाए बिकॉज देर इज नो वे सो यू लिटरली हैव टू टैप एवरी लॉयर ऑन द सोल शोल्डर एंड से कि प्लीज अगर रास्ता दे दें आप वहाँ तक पहुंचे वो वैसे मेरा कद छोटा है तो मुझे तो और भी प्रॉब्लम होती है क्योंकि वो यहाँ पर शुरू होते हैं तो मुझे यूं करके खड़ा होकर जज को देखना पड़ता है सो so, ये और फिर आप जाते हो यू नो खैर वेर ऑल यूज टू बी स्टेड एट एवरी वेयर दैट वी गो चाहे हमने बुरका पहना हो या चाहे हमने पैंट शर्ट पहनी हो घूरना तो सब नहीं है लेकिन कोर्ट में जो आपको वो घूरियाँ मिलती है ना वो एक और ही किस्म की होती है um, so, वो सारी चीज़ें बेयर करने के लिए एंड टू स्ट्रगल एंड टू पुश थ्रू दैट आपको एक काफ़ी थिक स्किन करनी होती है एंड यू नीड टू कंसिस्टेंटली कीप रिमाइंडिंग योर सेल्फ कि यू हैव एवरी राइट टू बी देर यू नो दे यू आर नॉट बींग गिवन सम सॉर्ट ऑफ फेवर बाई ऑल द मैन दैट यू आर सराउंडेड बाई एंड यू हैव टू कीप पुशिंग थ्रू बट आई थिंक दैट एज वीमेन बीन दिस This is why I appreciate what's happening in this dialogue that started. Because, you know, if you look at it, um, कोई भी अगर किसी male lawyer की कोई problem हो जाती है, किसी का you know nephew को कुछ हो जाता है, तो वो पूरी legal community उनके पीछे पहुंच जाती है, strike हो जाती है, पूरे Pakistan हर provincially strike हो जाती है कि विजिट प्लाने का प्लाने को कुछ हो गया, तो you know बट अगर कोई वेमेन की प्रॉब्लम आती है या अगर कोई औरतों की प्रॉब्लम आती है तो देर इज़ नो फोरम दैर इज बैंडिंग टुगेदर एंड डूइंग दैट एंड इफ वी डोंट डू दैट फॉर आर सेल्व दैन वी कैन एक्सपेक्ट मैन टू डू दैट फॉर अस बिकॉज वी कैन नॉट एनी लॉन्गर वेट फॉर मैन टू मेक दिस रूम फॉर अस वी हैव टू कीप पुशिंग फॉरवर्ड एंड एनकरेजिंग इच अदर टू आई नो दैट वट आई सेल इज नॉट वेरी स्पेसिफिक टू क्रिमिनल प्रैक्टिस इन पाकिस्तान um but the problems that exist on the criminal side will exist in different shapes and forms on the corporate side on the civil side on the constitutional side whatever place that you do um so i think that we need to continue talking about these issues because once we do and we have that awareness and we have that uh, openness then we can pinpoint those problems and start focusing on how to resolve them right thank you ms soe richards स्टैंडिंग देर विद ओपन आर्म्स विलिंग टू एंड रेडी टू एक्सेप्ट यू एंड देन कम द नेक्स्ट मॉर्निंग लाइक अच्छा ठीक है अब मुझे अपनी जगह भी खुद बनानी है अपनी जगह के अलावा मैंने अपनी रिस्पेक्ट भी खुद बनानी है अच्छा चलो जगह भी बना ली रिस्पेक्ट भी बना ली उसके बाद आई हैव टू अर्न द ट्रस्ट ऑफ नॉट ओनली माई कॉलीग्स 
right? I have to earn the trust of my partner, I have to earn the trust of my colleagues. But beyond that, also I have to earn the trust of the bar and the profession in which I'm operating in. Okay? So this odds are stacked against women in each and every profession. It's not like law is something different, so to speak. Um, it becomes more interesting as far as law goes because as advocates, we are taught to and we are trained to advocate for different causes that come in front of us. But somehow or the other, we are unable to advocate our own causes. If one of us feels harassed, for instance, in court, we can come back and talk about it and make fun of it. But no one will take the stand of actually going and reporting it before a tribunal or a bar or, you know, Lahore High Court Bar Association and their farak farak committees. We don't do it in different places. Why? Because people take the stand that this is a woman and this is a woman who came and reported this thing, right? And then we don't band together as women. Okay? اس کے اندر یہ ہوتا ہے کہ جس طرح بھی مریم نے کہا کہ چھوٹی تھوڑی سی پوزیشنز ہوتی ہیں ساری خواتین ایک دوسرے کے ساتھ ہی لڑائیوں میں شروع ہو جاتی ہیں بجائے یہ کہ ہم اکٹھے ہوں اور ایک فورس ٹو ریکن ویت بنے ایز ویمن ایز اے ہول وی اینڈ اپ فالوئنگ پری ٹو پیٹی پالیٹکس دیٹ ادر پیپل آر آرکسٹریٹنگ ان فرنٹ آف سو دیٹس ون اسمال تھنگ دیٹ آئی وانٹیڈ ٹو ایڈ سیپریٹلی آپ نے ایکسیپشنس کی بات کیا ایگری وت وٹ مریم آلسو سیٹ کہ ایکسیپشنس پرابلی اس طرح سے ہے کہ وی آر پرولیجڈ انف ٹو بی ان اے پوزیشن وے وی ہیو بین انوائٹیڈ ایٹ دس ونڈرفل پینل اینڈ وی ہیو دیٹ سارٹ آف ریچ کہ ہمیں آئیڈینٹیفائی کیا گیا کہ آئیں اور ہم اپنی باتیں آپ کے ساتھ شیئر کریں بٹ دیٹ ڈزنٹ مین دیٹ دے آنٹ ایوری ڈے ہیروز آؤٹ دیر ان دا لیگل پروفیشن اسٹینڈنگ ان دا سن اسٹینڈنگ آؤٹ سائڈ دا کورٹس بلونگ ٹو دا سیم جینڈر ایز اس ٹھیک ہے ویمن آر دیر Women are already a force to reckon with. We just need to band them together in some manner or form and make it one voice instead of, you know, having petty politics um, face off women against each other. So, I mean, that's one part. This time, Varyam Nebhi Kaake, expecting men to do it for you. Um, I think you have to take the first step yourself in the years of practice that I've had so far. ربیہ نے بھی پہلے یہ کہا تھا کہ ہائی کورٹ جانا زیادہ کنوینئنٹ لگتا ہے کیونکہ لوور کورٹس کے اندر ڈرٹی لوئرز ہوتے ہیں ٹھیک ہے سم تھنگ دیٹ اے لاٹ آف مائی فیمیل کالیجز دیٹ آئی اسٹڈیڈ وتھ آلسو اینڈ آئی اینٹرڈ پریکٹس وتھ آلسو ہم لوگ ساتھ میں کلاس ڈسٹنگشنس پہ بھی بڑا آ جاتے ہیں یو نو ایون ود ان ویمن اٹس ایز ایف وی آر ناٹ اے مارجنلائز کمیونٹی جسٹ بائی بینگ پارٹ آف یو نو دا فیئر سیکس وی آلسو ہیو ٹو میک آر اون پلیس امنگس دا رینکس تو اس کے اندر صرف ایک چھوٹی سی چیز یہ آ جاتی ہے کہ یو ہیو ٹو لرن ٹو ٹرسٹ یور انسٹنگس یو ہیو ٹو لرن ٹو ٹرسٹ ادر ویمن اراؤنڈ یو اینڈ یو ہیو ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ دیٹ یو آر رسپانسبل ناٹ جسٹ فار یور سیلف بٹ فار سو مینی ادر ویمن ہو آر وانٹنگ ٹو اینٹر دا پروفیشن ایز ویل مے بی یو ہیو اے اسمال کانورسیشن وتھ سم ون سٹنگ آؤٹ سائڈ دا ہائی کورٹ بار روم اینڈ یو انسپائر دیٹ پرسن ٹو کنٹینیو آن ان اے سرٹن کریئر پات اور ٹیک اونرشپ آف اے سرٹن کیس تو اس میں صرف یہ چیز ہوتی ہے کہ آپ نے سپورٹ نیٹ ورکس بنانے ہیں با پالیٹکس میں آپ انوالوڈ ہیں لاٹ آف مائی فرینڈس لائک جتنے لوگوں کے ساتھ میں نے لا پڑھی نن آف دیم آر انوالوڈ ان با پالیٹکس تو یہ چیز ہم بڑا کہتے ہیں کہ یو نو او دا لا پروفیشن از ناٹ سوٹیڈ فار ویمن اور اس کے اندر تو بڑے عجیب لوگ ہوتے ہیں مگر ہم نے کبھی خود جا کے انوالو ہو کے حصہ نہیں لیا ایک چیز میں تو ہم کیسے کہہ سکتے کہ اچھی ہے یا بری ہے رائٹ سو آئی تھنک دیٹس اٹ فرام می ان ٹرمز آف دا چیلنجز اور ابھی ہم باہر بات کر رہے تھے تو آن ایم لیسر سیریس نوٹ چھوٹے چھوٹے چیلنجز اس طرح کے بھی ہوتے کہ آپ کا کیس کال ہونے لگا ہے آپ نے باتھ روم جانا ہے ٹھیک ہے سو ایز ویمن یو ہیو دیٹ ون باتھ روم ان دا لاہور ہائی کورٹ وچ از آن ون کارنر اگر آپ ڈسٹرکٹ کورٹس میں چلے جائیں سول کورٹس میں چلے جائیں وہ اس کونے پہ باتھ روم ہے کیس آپ کا یہاں پہ So, I mean, these are small things. It's only when you have women on the panel that are making the decisions of how administrative things ought to be, how certain things ought to be formulated from a policy standpoint. Then you will get a cross-section of ideas or a cross-section of opinion which you can make probably better decisions. So, um, that's primarily it in terms of the challenges. Of course, I mean, I think my fellow panelists have gone into a lot of detail regarding practice, so I don't think I'll go over each and everything over and over again. I think we're all agreed that we face these challenges, and obviously, of course, so I think I'm just going to take a step back and address this big problem, which is of legal education. 
I mean, the question that arises, and I think I'm talking in terms of my own experience, but obviously it might be an experience that's shared across the board, is is our legal education system preparing us for entering litigation? I'm not talking about legal profession generally, I'm just talking about is the legal education system preparing women litigators? Because what happens is, and, and we're sitting in one of the finest law schools in Pakistan, so I mean, I think it's only fitting that we talk about this here. And I'm a product of this law school, so I think I can talk about it quite freely. Even in classrooms, aap dekhte hain, as a female law student, uh, in these days, women far outnumber men in legal in the legal education system. Why aren't those women stepping into the litigation? There's a huge discrepancy. There's so many women in this classroom. Where are they going? Why aren't, why aren't we seeing them in the courts? Uh, if we start from the classroom level, who is dominating the classroom discussions? It's men. Why aren't women speaking up? Is I mean, nobody can dispute the fact that women are very intelligent. Our women law students are quite intelligent. There's nothing keeping them back. But why aren't women these women speaking up? Socially, hamare under ek cheez daligiye ke as a woman, your opinion is not legitimate. And I think we we're not. I'm not an anthropologist. I cannot go into why that happens. But there is a feeling at the back of your head as a law student that maybe my opinion is not legitimate. What happens is men are actually being taught that your opinion is legitimate. You have a right to your opinion. And men are more likely to think that their opinions are facts. So if you enter a law classroom, and now you can do it as an objective outsider, you will see a man will speak his opinion saying, I know that this, this, this. And if you observe the very few women who speak up in class, they'll say, I think that maybe if I'm not wrong, this is how it is. There's always a qualifier. And if you see that these are your future litigators, who do you think is more likely to enter this profession of litigation where you have to take that step and speak up in court where there's so many people who are talking over you? Talk. Men are also more likely to interrupt women and say, well, actually, let me tell you how it is. There will be a female lost, and we've all been through this because all of us have attended co-ed educational institutions. And a woman will be talking, well, this, this, it's how this is. Actually, no. Actually, ye hua tha. Main aapko hu. And I'm not saying that these men, there's the ill intention there. It's just socially, from the minute we step into school, this has been ingrained into our heads. Now, the second step. There is a serious lack of networking ability that women have. And networking is the key to becoming a good litigator in Pakistan. You have to network at the bar. You have to network with your clients. You have to net If you enter a law firm, you have to network with your bosses. Otherwise, you're not going to get ahead. Uh, where is this lack of networking coming in? Now, look at your drawing rooms. Women are at one side. What are they talking about? Clothes, family problems. I mean, it's true. All of us go through it. I'm sure every, there are some people who are the exceptions there, but that is the general drawing room in Pakistan. Women are talking about clothes. Women are talking about social lives. Men are talking about politics. I mean, I'm not saying those political discussions have any meat to them, and they're amazing political discussions. But usse hota hai, the boys are learning how to talk the talk. Ab, they will take what they're learning in that drawing room discussion, and they will bring it to the office. And then they will talk to their bosses about, aapne wo TV pe dekha tha, wo flane case mein ye flane lawyer ne ye ka tha. Because they have learned that from the political drawing room discussion. That's an amazing networking skill. Ab, the legal profession, the problem, the primary problem that I faced when I entered the legal profession was there is no structure that you can come into, as Ms. Rabia Bajwa also pointed out. The legal structure is there's an apprenticeship model. You have to attach yourself to a senior lawyer, and you are dependent on them for your training. And you have to be in their good graces. So at the end of the day, your legal training is very much dependent on how much they like you. That's going to determine how much you get paid, if, or if you get paid at all. And this can go on for years and years. I've seen people who work with senior lawyers for five or six years, and they don't make a cent because their senior just doesn't think that they're worthy of getting paid. And it could just be that person A, because the senior likes him, gets 20,000, and person B just gets 19 or 18. I mean, there's no structure, because there's no structured law firm, so it's really the apprenticeship model. Uh, women aren't good at networking. There's that social barrier that doesn't allow us to speak freely with men. And men have been trained their whole lives to interact with men, and that's why they are excelling in the legal profession. Uh, as female associates who work at law firms, and my colleague Amna is here who can also tell you about this, we have this saying, behind every successful lawyer, there's a team of female associates who are doing all the work. So if you go to every single law firm in Pakistan, 
there'll be this floor full of female associates who are doing the research, who are doing the drafting. They're sitting there till 12 a.m. They're not getting paid. And this has nothing to do with the place that I worked at because I don't want to take <laughs> names because I was actually very fortunate to work at a good law firm. But I'm talking about general practice. There's this floor of female associates. They're doing the research. They're doing the drafting. They're doing all of the work. What happens the next day? Who's going to court? The male associates. The male associates are taking the memos that the female associates are drafting, and they're showing up in court with them. So who is going to get ahead as a litigator? It's not those poor female associates who are sitting there working all night doing the research. It's those male associates who show up in court with those memos. I mean, these are primarily the challenges. And I think my colleagues here have covered everything else. But I think as women, we need to overcome this thing that's put in our head ever since we entered the education, formal education system, that there is something wrong with us and we cannot assert ourselves. I mean, if you, and I encourage everybody to go to court, the second you entered law school, just go to court. The second you enter court, you'll see how bad the quality of the litigating lawyers are. And then you'll know, I mean, I can do this. But because we don't go to court, we're not willing to take that step. We live in this, we have this like misconception that I can't do litigation. Whereas you can do litigation because the quality is quite frankly not so good. Just to, I'm sorry I'm interrupting, but just to add an example to the quality of litigation, we actually had an ongoing trial where uh, my colleague and I were arguing a motion that we had filed. Uh, I can't remember exactly what the motion was. Um, but it was a criminal case, so there was a prosecutor on the other side and there was the two of us on one side. And we're arguing on application and the prosecutor walks out of court. No, no notice to the judge, no, he literally just, he just gets up and he leaves because he's that disinterested. He won that motion. <laughs> so that should tell you about the quality of, of uh, litigation in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And another thing, this is Ms. Rabi Bajjan, I mean, one of the biggest disadvantages is that there are two separate bar rooms. There's the men's bar room and there's the women's bar room. Now, the men's bar room will be very big, and the women's bar room will be very end, and the women's bar room will be stuff. I mean, obviously, it's a logistical problem as well, but the problem is that all of the networking and the political bar politics is happening in the men's bar room, which is where you want to be. Uh, there is nothing, the justification that the bar gives is, well, women can sit in the male bar room, it's just a co-ed bar room. Now, it happens that the women who come to the men's bar room, they are all the same, this is the problem. Then, there was a gossip that started, who can see them? So, I mean, these are all of these like, small problems that we've internalized so much, but there is a need for us to challenge them, especially as women lawyers. It's basically, so it's basically more of, you think, a social dimension to this legal profession as well, and the issues that are out there in the society, and say even our drawing rooms, are perhaps, you know, adding to the woes of women in the profession, because then I, how I see it from your discussion, probably a paradigm shift is probably necessary, not just at the professional level, uh, probably at a more basic, you know, or at a more, say, grand norm sort of a level where a whole paradigm shift in the whole psyche of the society is probably... I mean, obviously, we live in the society, and the profession is very much a part of society. Now, yeah. it's like it's very naive to assume that the judge will leave all of his problems at home when he's judging. He's going to judge based on who he is yeah. and what society he comes from. It's very much true for the legal profession as well. I mean, why is there disparity between women in the legal profession? The primary reason is because there's a disparity between men and women in the society, and professionally. And all of the things that we're highlighting here probably apply to all of the all professions all of the as well. So, I mean, we can't take out that social dimension as I well. I mean, piggybacking on what you said earlier, like one thing I was talking about with my mother was um, predominantly it has been men who have been setting the rules of what's going to happen. Okay, I'm a doctor. Okay, and they tell a great story that it was women became acceptable in the medical profession when men wanted to take their women to a woman doctor and not to a male doctor, right? Women also wanted female doctors to talk to about their problems. So, this is when their demand was so separately, the supply was also there. What Zainab said earlier about um, essentially the drawing room discussions being replicated, and the things that are different, and the men's things are different, and there are some things that are different, and there are some अपने अपने छोटे छोटे साइलोज में सारे काम कर रहे होते तो उसमें यही है कि ऑफ कोर्स मेन नीड टू टेक द मेंटल फॉरवर्ड एंड से कि अच्छा चलो ठीक है 
these women who are working in our law firms are doing an excellent job of doing the draft. They are doing an excellent job of putting the case together. So let them argue the case the next day, you know. And women are at our end, we need to be in a position where we're able to convince people and not just become silent. But our work is not just to make a case. Why can't we say that we can argue too? You know, so I mean, we have to take matters into our own hands at some point and stop waiting for things to change around us and then conveniently step in when things have changed. The change that we want to see has to come essentially from us at the end of it. Okay, so just an open question to the panelists. Uh, what contribution do you think that women have made to the profession? If you can highlight those contributions, maybe the awareness level would be quite beneficial for the people that we have with us today. Any contribution in significant terms to the profession? Mm -hmm. I mean, I can like say, I mean, the reason why I chose to become a lawyer, because I was fortunate enough to grow up in the late 80s and the early 90s, which is when the women's movement was at, their peak, at its peak in Pakistan. And I saw all of these amazing women coming out on the streets. Also, the Hadood ordinances were very much a reality in our lives. And there were all of these oppressive laws. And it was the first time like I saw these women and these, I mean, all of us know who they are, and we don't need to name them. But it was so important for me to see people that, female role models that I could aspire to be. And which I think is so important. So I mean, saying that what contribution have women made, I think women, and this could be no overstatement, but I think women have been responsible for strategic litigation in the legal profession. And Joe, strategic litigation is basically this concept that you use litigation and you use our fundamental rights to enhance the jurisprudence of the litigation. For example, if there's a right to life, you use strategic litigation to enhance what it applies to. For example, I mean, obviously the contribution made by men is also essential, but women have really been at the forefront of the street. A very important case that really inspired me to enter the legal profession was the Saima Vihid case. Just yeah. for the first time, it, the court said that a woman who is an adult does not need the permission of her male guardian to get married. I mean, and that, it's a woman lawyer. And this is a woman who's making that change in our society. I mean, all of us love to complain about there's so much wrong with the society. There really is. But then you see these women lawyers who are coming out on the streets and they're fighting for it, which I think was very inspirational for me. So I think that's how the face of the legal profession changed once women started coming into it.